Hey, good day to you. Uh, welcome to the Open House Show with Jesse Meadow. But we've got a great guest for you today, that the Jack Sweeney, Assistant Head of School for Advancement at the New School. Um, a few years back, we did a tuition reset campaign and talked about that on our podcast. Uh, you know, today we're going to bring him on. We're going to talk about, um, you know, refresh our memories on uh, that old campaign and then obviously get caught up what's been going on since and and how are things looking uh, over at the new school so without further ado let's bring him on mr jack sweeney how are you sir doing well jesse how are you good good i can't complain yeah. you know i i keep having these meetings and talking with everyone uh, all over the country and you know down here in sunny florida we're just we just live a totally different world down here every time we talk to somebody and they're freezing and ice storms and schools snow cancellations so, you know, I, I can't complain. We're still we're at 80 degrees. It's almost beach weather. You're living the dream. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I appreciate you coming on again. Uh, real quick for anyone that that might not know, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about the new school as well. Yeah. So um, I am currently the assistant head of advancement at the new school. So enrollment uh, development communications kind of falls under my umbrella. Um, I've been in independent schools, I guess it's 23, 24, something like that years now. Uh, so, um, you know, really spent a lot, a lot of my time, a lot of my career in, in admissions. And so this is kind of a new role for me over the last couple of years. So, uh, uh, but as far as experience working at boarding schools, day schools, all of that has come up, has come across in my, my, uh, I hope my young career. Uh, the new school is located in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's 51, 51 years old. Uh, it started as an early childhood, uh, and then they started adding grades every year. And we had our first graduating class four years ago. So uh, we're now a 12 month all the way up to uh, 12th grade. Uh, you know, current enrollment right now is about 458. So, uh, you know, everything looks good on that. End. Uh, we're located in Northwest Arkansas, which is the home of Walmart, and Tyson, and J.B. Hunt, and some of the other uh, suppliers and buyers for those companies. So um, it's one of the fastest growing areas in the United States, if you take a look at uh, some demographic data. Well, wow, that's incredible. Um, you know, I, I can imagine with the boom of, of uh, those companies coming through, as they grow, so does the you know, the town there. Um, that's, that's interesting area, big opportunity there for you guys. I hope you can, uh, continue to make space for all those new, uh, students that come through. Um, you know, I appreciate you taking the time, refreshing us on yourself and the school, you know, given a little feedback and, and refresher on, uh, the tuition reset campaign itself, you know, uh, lead us up to that decision. You know, what, what were some, what were some of those major factors in, um, you know, pulling the trigger and actually, going through and making the proposal and getting everything approved to, to do a tuition reset. Yes. Yeah, so you almost have to go a couple of years back. And uh, so I, this is my fifth year here. And uh, my first year uh, we had an interim head and, and tuition uh, was raised 8%. And we, we had a very high attrition, uh, uh, I'd say problem. And so um, after that, we, you know, kind of tried to figure out how to get out of it. We had a new head come in, uh, Nancy Lang has been great. Uh, she, um, her and the board uh, and the admin team, we raised tuition 1% that following year. And enrollment was growing, but it wasn't really uh, growing at the pace that we needed to. Uh, I first, I've known Je Jesse, for, Jesse for a long time, um, but then the pandemic happened and, you know, no one knew what was, what the world was going to be like. And that's when I started working with Schoolcraft to really get people who were sitting at home and weren't allowed to go anywhere or weren't able to go anywhere. Um, and so we were able to uh, come in about 3.30 that year in enrollment, total enrollment. Um, and then uh, going into that, that actual year, uh, taking a look at tuition, um, I brought, uh, I did a lot of research, did a lot of demographic research, did a lot of research on schools that have used a tuition reset. And I walked into the head's office and the CFO and said, what do you think? And, um, uh, I think at first they thought I was crazy, uh, but the more we talked about it, the more the more we did investigating and research, um, we decided it was a good move to good move, and maybe we should present it to the board. And um, kind of the same reaction, you know, you don't you don't uh, you don't go down in price um, in the in the world we live in right now. But uh, they decided to give it a shot, and really, um, it was the best thing for the school. So we reset tuition uh, back 
where, where it was five years in 2000, what was that, 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the next part of that was, all right, now we need to get the word out. And we, Jesse and I spent a lot of time uh, on Zoom calls and phone calls <laughs> and, and uh, we were able to uh, get a plan together and uh, definitely spend our marketing money in a very, for, in a very good place and, and uh, trying to get as much for the bang, as much as we could out of the bank for a buck, for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. We did spend a lot of time. And, 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 and when I say, you know, uh, being on this side of things uh, and, and being able to uh, still have that creativity and that spark and that conversation back and forth, hey, you know, what about this for an idea? Um, you know, we have this capability. Why don't we try this with it? I mean, that that was so much fun in that campaign. Um, and obviously you being so active, uh, knowing the needs of the school, knowing your audience uh, much better than I. Uh, you know, adding that creative spark with knowing what our capabilities were and, hey, why don't we take things in this direction? And we built it out and boom, we launched it. And, you know, being digital, obviously, you know, has a ton of advantages as far as, you know, analytics, real time reporting, being able to pivot and optimize right in um, in in real time. Uh, But, you know, I guess, you know, what was some of your biggest impetus on 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 deciding to do basically a hundred percent digital campaign as, as far as the outreach is concerned. Yeah. I mean, the school, uh, before I got here and probably the first couple of years spent a lot of money on, you know, print and, and ads and newspapers and, you know, mailers and the world we live in, um, you know, that's just, that it's not going away, but it's not something that, that, uh, that you see often. And, the way you know we t- when we talked, it was really about um, how do we get into people's phones, how do we get into people's social media accounts, <clears throat> and we had a pretty good social media presence, but we probably weren't reaching everyone that we needed to reach. And so, uh, really, um, you taught me a lot of things about geofencing and and you know keywords and all that. And so, um, it, it just made sense if we were going to spend spend the money, we were going to spend it in a way that would get our name out and you know to be in a in a community for 51 years and people not you know because we're called the new school they think we're like brand new um they didn't even know who we were and yeah. and so we really had to try to get that out to as many people as we can the school traditionally was really word of mouth and with covid and everything word of mouth wasn't necessarily working the way uh it had in the past so we had to be creative and uh digital was the way to go and uh, we haven't looked back since. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a huge advantage, uh, especially when you talk about, you know, that, that common theme of, you know, how do we get into their phones and get in front of new families, uh, especially with your area. You know, I remember, uh, and this probably would go for anyone that has kind of a, a large business or a growing area, um, you know, that, that new movers demographic uh, was a huge hit. You know, obviously, they're going to be completely new to the area and know nothing. Um and while word of mouth is is always going to be a key factor for you know any independent school, um, getting out there in front, using contextual targeting, who's new in the market, you know, for you guys, I mean, we're talking twelve months old. We're we're geofencing, uh, birthing centers, uh, planting seeds, really focusing on that long term growth, which was amazing. You know, I guess from your end. Um, were there any major surprises in the results uh, of that campaign? Um, you know, was there anything that kind of stood out like, man, I really didn't expect this to happen? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think, you know, the, the part that, that I didn't, I, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't expecting it to happen that quick and mm-hmm. for the tours and, you know, the applications and everything just started to, you know, my days got a lot busier and uh, my staff's days got a lot busier and it was just a surprise because I thought it would have taken, taken some time. Um, and obviously, you know, we were, we were dealing with, um, and we were a small school and um, you know, the, the pandemic and, and people wanting their kids to be safe and making sure that they're open. So we had to do a lot of things right on the back end. And I think, you know, the, the head and the administration really uh, made that possible and just, watching it kind of take off and to be where we were, you know, I would say probably like April, May was encouraging. Um, and we just kept on going. So, you know, to be at three thirty and then jump up to about, I guess it was three eighty the next year. Um, 
And, you know, like I said, now we're at four, well, we were at 420 last year. So now we're at 458. The goal of next year is 480. Uh, so we, we just got to continue to move it along. And I think the important part too, was it wasn't, you know, we were attracting new families, we were getting tours, we were getting applications, but it was really putting a, a emphasis on community and retention and keeping those as well. Uh, I've said this probably a million times. It's it's more expensive to go find a new family than it is to retain an uh, an old one. But you know when you have when you live in the area that we live in and people are moving in and out, you need those new those new prospects and um, you know get them in, into the door. And I've said this before. I think if we can get them through the doors, take give them on a tour, we're we're not going to be batting a thousand, but we're going to be pretty close. Yeah, getting them on campus, uh, you know, having them experience it in more of a feeling, feel the campus, feel the energy. It's so key. And it's it's very difficult to turn away from if you're, you know, a parent. Uh, you go on, you get impressed. It's like, OK, how, how do we not come here? Um, you know, kind of situation. And, you know, I, I, I like that you touched on the the growth in the years after. And that's obviously the, the main point of the podcast. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit. I, I know we did the tuition freeze. You know, how important was that decision, you know, when we're talking about the long term um, impact that the tuition reset campaign had? Yeah, so I've seen schools that have done uh, or in my research, I saw schools that had done the, the tuition reset and then the following year just, you know, increased tuition to make up for the, the previous year. And we were growing pretty, you know, we were growing at a pretty good rate that we didn't want to slow it down. We wanted to continue using that momentum. And so mm -hmm. to come in, to come in with a freeze um, was bold. I think probably even almost as bold as the, the uh, reset uh, because, you know, teacher salaries and programs and everything like you have to, th everything you have to think about. But when, when the board agreed to do it, it, it the tuition freeze, it just, it just it added a, a lot of momentum and 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 got people like saying okay, you know we know something's going to come along where we're going to have to raise tuition like parents and stuff but you know we're okay with one more year and and we made it and and then we were able to do what we did this year which was raise tuition four percent so um, you gotta you gotta try not to make up all of the money that you the potential revenue that you might lose with a reset or a freeze in that following year you gotta do it in uh, you know, steps for sure. No, definitely. And, and, you know, I really liked the focus, um, from, you know, obviously the administration of the school, uh, yourself driving that ship to, uh, you know, all the powers that be the board getting on, on for lack of better words, board, um, with that decision, because it's difficult, you know, one is difficult to do the tuition reset in, in general and then, okay, well now we're going to do a couple more years of, of, you know, not increasing mm -hmm. that revenue. Uh, it's scary when you're trying to run things. But at the end of the day, I would imagine any school that does this, it's it's really about the community. It's really going to be about messaging to them and, and trying to meet their needs and, and the, in the reality of, you know, where independent uh, school tuition is in comparison to inflation and, and, and uh, wages and such. So, you know, that being said, uh, it, it almost is if you if you don't do it that way, it's almost like you're giving ammunition to the community that all the messaging and, and, and all the things that you said about mm -hmm. hearing them and, and trying to meet their needs wherever they you can uh, is all for naught. And it, it almost kind of puts an immediate sour taste in their mouth for it. Um, so it was really encouraging to see not only that you did it, um, but, you know, uh, the results of year, uh, year in and year out growth afterwards. You know, I guess uh, to talk a little bit about that. What, what did that enrollment look like, uh, you know, that first tuition freeze year? Um, and obviously with retention too, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's that, that last year, um, last year actually, because this is the first year you're doing that, that increase. So, you yeah. know, tell me how that, that looked. And, and obviously that kind of goes along with that community feedback. What, what were the parents the, the, the saying about this and how they felt about things? Yeah, I mean, and I think a lot of it, you know, you can put tuition aside and tuition increases, you know, we had to get a lot of things right with the community with pro, pro programmatic, you know, program and, and academics and athletics and arts and all that so that people uh, felt uh, that this could be a place that they wanted to be and have their kids at. And so, um, you know, to see us go from 330 to uh, right around 380 and then 420. Um, and then last year with the tuition freeze to go to 450, 458, uh, you you just see the the amount of growth. Now, 
we we were able to you know look back and see the trends and see the the uh, the the data tells the story. The data doesn't lie, and it's telling us you know that we we need to continue to uh, build on those build on that community, build on the program, build on everything that we we're doing. And in the end of the day, you know, if we were to just raise tuition uh, to get out of the freeze or get out of the reset, um, you know, what are, what are we talking about? We're talking about, you know, kids that families that only stay for one year because you've raised tuition or two years because and then you did this. And so it was for the longevity of the school. You know, we always say for the next 50 years, since we're 50, you know, 50 plus years old, you know, how are we going to keep this place, you know, uh, going? So it. it you can see the path and you know if you look at like where we are for 23 24 with the tuition increase now um you know we're ahead of where we were last year at this time and you know we've got we we're going to find 30 more students and so uh eventually you know uh, i'm hoping in what well, by the start of school in august we'll be at that 480 mark or a little bit over it and um nothing has slowed down though that's that's the important part the tours are still you know, flown in the applications. Um, word of mouth has come back a little bit. You know, this is what we're doing. This is where where they're at, and uh, you know, making sure that value proposition, that value added, is is up up front and in front of people as they make decisions. Um, and we've got some challenges coming 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 across. And, you know, not every state has the challenges that Arkansas has or we're about to have with school choice and you know, minimum. Uh, teacher faculty or faculty staff wages um and so we've got a you know we're always uh we're always the target's always moving mm -hmm. yeah i mean i guess this is an interesting point to touch on i mean what a perfect time uh for your school to really gather that community trust um you know really get that word of mouth going because in the end it's going to be more difficult um you know, you're just going to have more competition with that school choice and the, and the different options that are going to be there that some states are going through. Uh, you know, down here in Florida, obviously, it's the, we've had a huge boom of charter schools and such. And, you know, depending on what your your um, your local area is, you know, you might have actually very good public school options um, mm -hmm. that, you know, you, there's no real reason academically that you would need a, uh, you know, a private school or an independent school. Um, as an option. So, so to really build that and start to see the numbers, especially this year, you know, where you had the, the, the real increase, the 4% increase, and you're already ahead of where you were before things have not slowed down the messaging and, and the word um, from, and the feedback from the community is still positive. Um, you know, that's, that's a real strong thing to go into this enrollment season with, and I, you know, we'll, we'll get that extra 30 kids too. Um, now, you know, one thing I did have in correlation to, you know, last question here in correlation to, um, you know, the, the, the normal growth for your area, you know, how has the growth of your enrollments matched that or exceeded that, you know, or, you know, typically, um, you know, the data that you're researching, uh, you know, definitely with the tuition reset and continuing to research as we, you know, every year go into a new admission cycle, um, you know, how is that compared stacked up, you know, um, with how people are moving into your area? Are you guys exceeding, um, what you should be doing? Well, we're, we're running out of space for sure. Um, and our early childhood and our K through four, um, which there's just, there's not a lot of room left. And so the idea that, you know, wait lists are going to end up happening, which is, is great to have. Um, but, you know, now you have an opportunity to get in a kindergarten, first, second, you know, hopefully, maybe it might be where you have to get in in at three or four or two years old or even before you're born so the the growth of the area is not slowing down um it, you know there's only two independent schools in northwest arkansas we're the only one from 12 month all the way to 12th grade there's one from up north that's six to 12 so there's not a lot of options i mean there's a, a charter school that opened up to, is opening up down the street um and you know and then obviously some of the public schools are really good in arkansas yeah. like we have some of the top public schools in the whole state and so really um, finding a, 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 an independent school and it being us is, you know, we can't, we're not going to have the room for everyone that's moving to the area. So there's, there's a growth potential um, uh, for a school like ours um, in, in, this, in this region. And so we just have to figure out, you know, what's next, you know, where, where, mm -hmm. where, where's, where are these kids, you know, where are these kids going to go? And we don't, 
you know, we don't want to force them to go to public school. And then when I say force, I mean, that's the only option they have left or that's the only option they have after living in San Francisco or New York or Florida. And, and uh, you know, they, their kids have spent their whole time at independent schools. Um, I, you know, I still think that our real competition is public schools and, and trying to get uh, families to understand why, why choose, a, you know, why choose an independent tuition charging school when I have one right across the street or in our neighborhood. Yeah, that's that's always the big question is the why. Why independent schools? Why boarding school? Why day school? Why this school? Um, and, and making sure that you're being proactive. Uh, you know, we talk about this a lot, um, you know, in, in, in our in our company is, you know, being proactive on you're you're in the research uh, stage uh, of, of parents of today. They're digital natives. They're going to be looking things up. You know, what are you doing to be proactively in front of them and showing them why? What is that story that you guys provide? You know, what are the differences um, in outcomes? Um, you know, whether that's social, emotional, academically, you know, college placement, there's a variety of different things that, you know, depending on which school it is. So making sure you're proactive about that. And, um, you know, along that point, obviously, we always like to end the show with, uh, you know, some insights on your end. Um, and it's actually a perfect, uh, um, you know, little segue into, you know, what do you think the biggest trends in enrollment are going to be? Um, you know, this could be product softwares. Uh, what, what do you think is going to happen in 2023 here with enrollment? You know, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, you and I have had many conversations about like what what's the hottest thing out there, and you know what's the new marketing tool. And you know, you guys do a great job of keeping schools like us uh, or people like me up to speed on things. So, um, I think digitally, you know, it's going to continue, and and that's the way the world's going. It's getting, like I said before, getting into people's phones, getting into their social media accounts, uh, their habits, their behaviors. Um, it's also about um, you know the generational gap and, and where we are with that and trying to figure out how we do reach that generation that um, you know doesn't doesn't think about spending their money in uh, when there's when their child's two years old to come to an early childhood uh, you know like a school like ours and so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, in a day school market how we continue to uh, evolve and. You know, I always say, you know, you know, admissions and enrollment and even advancement is not one year out, two years out. It's often five to ten years out where you don't have to have the answers for five years or, you know, ten years. But you got to start thinking, OK, like what's happening to the economy? What's happening in politics? What's happening mm -hmm. in, in your state government and uh, and what's happening in other schools? And, you know, try to try to at least get one foot ahead of the other before um you know, it's too late. It's so much easier to to act than react and and be forward thinking. And so that's one of the things that you know we're we're talking about now is, you know, what, what do we have to do next? Like, what is the next? You know, we have a strategic a strategic plan that's going to, you know, hopefully be published this summer. And and you know, what what does the next five years look like? Um, how are we going to how are we going to define ourselves? How are we going to set ourselves above and beyond? Um, the the marketplace in northwest arkansas or the region um, so people when they think oh you know i gotta go i gotta move to benville to work at walmart you know the new school is the first thing that comes to their mind yeah yeah and uh you know that's that's always uh, trying to stay ahead of the game there that's that's always the best and i gotta say personal experience you know when you act for me it's so it's it's there's so much opportunity um that it's kind of exciting you know, you're trying to build this out and try to think ahead and be creative. And um, it's exciting when, when you're act when you're reacting, you know, you're under the gun. It's a little bit more stressful. So, you know, you, you're still making decisions um, and more or less the, the same decisions. But, you know, uh, going into it with time, uh, excitement, opportunity rather than no time stress, uh, you know, it's, it's always a lot better to be a little bit proactive. And, and Jack, you are the, uh, the king of that. I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to us about that. Um, and everything that you've done there, I, I'm interested in the next, uh, you know, two years to see how things are going um, and, and where things are at for you, uh, because I, I can only imagine that you'll always have some story um, of, of something that you've done or, or been influenced to do uh, that's that's going to be newsworthy for sure. Um, that seems to follow you along. <laughs> well, I appreciate you, Jesse. I appreciate Schoolcraft. I mean, everything you, know, you guys have done for us and continue to do and. You know, even the uh, con if it's not about work, it's the conversations that we get to have about, you know, what's what's going on in the world.
That's right. That's right. Always important to have. Well, Jack, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time with us today. And uh, best of luck with this uh, new enrollment season. All right. Thank you, Jesse. That'll do it for us today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you want to see this episode in its entirety, uh, you can go to schoolcraftdigital.com under our resources page. We're also going to be on any uh, the audio version on any of your uh, local podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Apple uh, Podcast, anything that you listen to, we are available there as well. So until next time, I bid you adieu. Thank you very much.